Hello, and welcome to World Cup Dish Out. I'm your host, Neil Shah, and I'm here with seasoned sports presenter, RK. How are you doing today? Very good. Always good. Good, good, good. So today we're going to be talking about round two of the FIFA World Cup. I know we're already in, only in round one. Um, we, most teams have only played one match, but um, we're already looking ahead. And I would love to hear from you. Let's go down each of the tables, each of the groups. Who do you think the top two teams that will get out of the group will be? So let's, let's start with uh, Group A. We have Russia, Uruguay, Egypt, Saudi Arabia. Russia's already started off with uh, two big wins and, and uh, you know, confirmed their next round entry. But who do you think is going to be the, third, the, the yeah, second you, team there? You, you would think Uruguay. You would think Uruguay because, I mean, when you look at that group, I mean, Egypt... Uh, uh, look, I mean... The way Egypt qualified, I mean, it was it was uh, just that goal from Mo Salah towards those dying moments, and then he was hailed as a hero, and mm -hmm. he came into the tournament. Unfortunately, what happened in the Champions League final was not something that anybody would have wished for. Uh, so he wasn't exactly the same player. So he wasn't on the pitch. You could see the difference uh, between Mo Salah uh, prior to that Champions League final, prior to that shoulder injury, to what he was during the course of the FIFA World Cup. So Egypt is 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 not a part of. Uh, uh, they are not in contention anymore in all mm -hmm. likelihood. So obviously you, you've got uh, Russia, which is pretty much there. You, you would think Uruguay because they've, yeah. they've got the experience and Saudi Arabia, uh, let's be honest, uh, they aren't um, the greatest side in the world. I mean, we've seen better Saudi Arabian side in terms of organization, not always in terms of scoring goals, but they are far more organized. But from game one, you don't want to keep, give yourself, keep yourself completely open, especially in yeah. game one. I mean, mm -hmm. the opening night, yeah. I mean, you kind of know that when a side scores as many as five goals against you, you know that it's really, really going to be difficult. And that's, that's one of those groups where you might have fancied your chances going through because you've got uh, Russia, which you thought you can nick a point uh, out of that game. Or Egypt, maybe I would have thought that Egypt would have started off strongly, but that wasn't to be. So in that sense, I think uh, Uruguay uh, have got the best opportunity, uh, besides obviously Russia, which are through mm -hmm. pretty much to the next stage of the competition. Got it, got it. So let's move on to Group B. It's quite an interesting one with that 3-3 uh, three, three Portugal, uh, Spain draw. Uh, now we have Iran sitting up top with uh, Portugal, Spain and Morocco. Who do you think is coming out of there? You know what? I mean, um, w when the draws were announced, I mean, obviously everybody uh, expected Spain and Portugal to get through to the next stage of the mm -hmm. competition. Now, I might be branded a villain, but I'm going to stick my neck out and say, Hang on a minute, I kind of see a Portugal coming through mm -hmm. and maybe even Iran coming through. Uh, the reason I, why I say that is not because of the number of goals that Iran can score, mm -hmm. but I think Iran have done well to nick all three points in the game where they would have ideally wanted to nick all three points, which is against Morocco, right? Mm -hmm. It's a tough team as well, Morocco. Don't underestimate Morocco because, yes, it's an African nation, but when you look at that lineup, there are plenty that ply their trade in Europe. So it's not as though it's just another team that is making up the numbers. So it's a very, very good Moroccan side. Iran have done the job. Now, if Iran can kind of put pressure mm -hmm. on one of these two sides, which is Portugal and Spain, uh, we'll be keen to see how Spain's mindset is because they've got... Uh, a coach changed at the last minute, uh, the Spanish mm. national coach yep. uh, was, was taken over by Real Madrid and you know everything that happened. Look, I might be, I'm, uh, there's, there's no footballing reason that I'm really uh, giving right here. <laughs> From what Iran has done in the past, they can park the bus, they can frustrate very good teams. We go back to that time in 2014, mm -hmm. uh, they frustrated Lionel Messi and Argentina. But for a penalty which should have gone Iran's way, mm -hmm. things could have been completely different for Iran. And Karlish Quiroz has been with the Iranian side for quite some time now. It's a, it's a group that he knows really well. Mm -hmm. They're fighting against all odds. You never know that could be, uh, I'm not saying a dark horse, yeah. but at the expense of one of these two sides, possibly Spain. I can see that happening. I might be absolutely wrong. Mm -hmm. I could be uh, battered <laughs> by the Spanish uh, supporters. But that's what I feel. If they can do something around that area, mm -hmm. you never know. I love it. I'm all about AFC teams uh, <laughs> shocking anybody yeah. in, in, in the world. And I think you're absolutely right. If, one, if an AFC team is going to you know, get out of a group with Portugal and Spain in it, um, I think Iran and uh, Carlos Queiroz has a great opportunity. So I'm with you fully. <laughs> so the Spanish supporters are coming at you. They can also <laughs> come at me as well. Uh, we have next um, Group C. We're looking at France, Denmark, Australia and Peru. Um, interesting group, um, interesting first round of matches as well. 
What do you feel? Uh, who do you feel is going to come out of there? Good, good win for France. Good mm-hmm. win for France. I think they would have wanted to get off uh, the mark in, um, in, in some fashion, which is exactly what they've managed to do. I think with the kind of squad that they've got, uh, look, you wouldn't say it was an electrifying performance from uh, France, but they've got the job done. Mm-hmm. And Australia, quite like uh, a few of the other side, have got this ability to make it really difficult for the opposition. We saw that in the last World Cup when they played against the Netherlands, if I'm not wrong, or Brazilians. I mean, on the opening night. So mm-hmm. it's, it's always one of those sides that can really cause an upset. So, but again, having said that, the way things started in that group, it's been interesting because France, the superpower, mm-hmm. started against Australia, who could have an upset or two under their belt. Mm-hmm. France did the job. Then you look at Denmark, mm-hmm. which obviously looked much better yeah. than Peru. So I would wait for one more game, perhaps, before judging what could happen. Ideally, France and Denmark, for me, uh, from that particular group only because they both have nicked their opening games. France, of course, you would expect. Mm-hmm. Denmark, perhaps, the other side. Yes, I completely agree. It's, uh, anything can happen in that group. And so I guess the next round will tell us. Then we get to uh, Group D. Group D is actually my favorite group because I'm definitely part of the bandwagon of Iceland supporters. And um, I'm, I'm excited to see what comes out of there. But in that group, we have Croatia. We have Iceland. We have Argentina. And a very um, excitable Nigeria team as well. Who do you think is coming out of this group? Uh, Iceland, look, I mean, probably, I mean, Iceland did really well against Argentina. So there was no uh, two ways about it. But having said that, uh, I think uh, Croatia is a good team because we, we, their midfield is, is, is brilliant. I mean, there's no two ways about it with the likes of Luka Modric and others doing a spectacular job. It's a very difficult group to call only because of what happened to Argentina and what Iceland are all about. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Uh, it's, it's a tough one. I, you would still suspect Argentina will definitely go through because they are Argentina. I mean, you can't yeah. uh, you know, see uh, a round of 16 without uh, possibly an Argentina. Iceland looks uh, resolute. They've, they've done their job before. Um, Croatia, I mean, I'm, I'm just, it's difficult for me. I mean, it's, it's a fairy tale for Iceland if they can keep going. But I, I would think Croatia will do the job for me. I mean, I would still fancy a Croatia and Argentina there. Got it. Then we go over to Group E. We have Serbia, Brazil, Switzerland, and Costa Rica. Who do you got there? I think Serbia and Brazil. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, that's, that's my pick from that particular group. Despite what happened to uh, Brazil, look, let's not forget they did not lose a game of football. They yes. still picked up uh, a point. And Serbia, that midfield was very, very strong. I mean, Matic was obviously doing his job. And you've got a few others that are very, very strong. I mean, one look at Serbia. They're all tall. They've got tremendous amount of presence out there. Mm-hmm. And they, they did the job against uh, Costa Rica. I know it was a free kick. I, I know it was Kolarov, that one moment of magic, which kind of turned things around for mm-hmm. uh, the Serbian national team. But I still fancy Serbia to go through at the expense of uh, um, Costa Rica. Uh, so I, I would still think Brazil and uh, Serbia from that group. Not necessarily in that order, got which, it. which will make it interesting when we talk about the next group. Absolutely. Then we go down to uh, Group F. And um, definitely some, some unexpected uh, results with uh, Mexico beating Germany in Group F. But we, you know, with the rest of the group, we have Sweden, Mexico, South Korea, Germany. Anything is, I mean, everything's wide open right now. What do you think is going to happen as we look through the next round? Uh, first things first, when you talk about South Korea, I mean, I, I watched them play. I mean, um, the opening fixture, they looked quick on the ball Mm -hmm. but I don't think you had uh, they had opportunities in that opening fixture but they did not seemingly take those opportunities Uh, they were good going into the final third but I don't think they had that in them to finish so I think that that seemingly was a a, a huge problem Uh, ideally you would think uh, Germany and Mexico but Germany have got to start winning those games really really quickly otherwise Germany are going to really struggle going on from here Got it. And then you look over at the Group G, Belgium, a team that hasn't lost in 20, 20 matches. Uh, last loss was back in September of 2016. You have England, a team that's looking quite fiery and very strong team. Uh, Tunisia and Panama. Panama playing their very first maiden uh, FIFA World Cup as well. What do you think is coming out of that group? You would think England and Belgium. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't see too much of an issue really in that group, only mm-hmm. because, I mean, England was looking good. I mean, they came back strongly, of course, after conceding that goal as well to a header, which, by the way, was a, a tad controversial. Mm-hmm. But um, Harry Kane is in great form. They came back. Uh, if, if there is a group where, you know, uh, not to sound arrogant, but if there is a group where uh, 
say a Garrett Southgate can have some amount of flexibility, it's probably this group or probably mm. Group A where you had the likes of Russia and uh, yeah. Saudi Arabia and stuff. So it's, it's a group that is uh, very kind to England. I mean, that's how I would look at it. So I think England there, Belgium looked very, very good. Lukaku scoring a couple of goals, yeah. Hazard around, Kevin De Bruyne, Mertens. I mean, it's, it's a star-studded lineup which hasn't yet lived up to its billing. So you would expect uh, straight away that uh, England and Belgium would go through the next stage of the competition. Got it. And then we round out with the Group H. We have Japan, Senegal, who scored a very interesting second goal uh, yesterday against uh, Poland, and then you know, Poland, Colombia as well. Um, all quite even teams in a lot of ways. So, who do you think is coming out of this group? Look, when when I looked at the group and when I looked at the draw, I would have thought that it's Poland and Colombia which will get through to the mm -hmm. next stage of the competition. Yeah. But after the first round of matches, anything could happen because Japan played against a 10-man um, Colombia for most part of the 90 minutes, literally the entire game, quite literally, and Japan um, took advantage of that. So that's yeah. that's happened. And Poland, I thought, was extremely lackluster. I watched mm. the game between Poland and Senegal. Senegal was, was good. What I really liked about Senegal was how organized and how deep they were ready to sit mm -hmm. in the second half. Yeah. And again, when you talk about uh, somebody of the caliber of Sadio Mane, he's had an outstanding season with Liverpool. He's the leader of Senegal. He's, he's marshalling the resources as well. And the coach has drilled into them that you don't have to be too fancy. Because more often than not, we've seen a few of those... Uh, uh, African nations mm -hmm. which have tried to be too ambitious and have given away leads uh, in, in the previous editions of the international tournaments. Even in that game against Poland, when Krakowiak scored that header yeah. in the dying moments or rather a few more minutes to go, I thought, hang on a minute, is Senegal going to struggle here again and are they going to give away those couple of points and settle for one point? No, they were happy to sit deep, they were still able to defend they did not they were able to absorb that pressure which which will definitely keep them in good stead so senegal i think from whatever little i've seen uh, in this world cup are going to go through it's going to be an interesting one so maybe you you'd still think colombia because it is colombia they've done really well um and and uh, japan they've they've gotten the initiative it's too tough to call that second team and poland i mean you know poland is normally good i haven't seen the poland that i would have ideally liked to see yeah Actually, that was uh, Japan's win against Colombia was the first time an Asian team has beat a go. South American team in, in 18 matches It's uh, in, in the FIFA World Cup. Quite interesting. You've heard it from our expert, RK. Uh, what, one of the takeaways I get is I think Iran is going to the second <laughs> round and the Spain national team will be watching from uh, second round from home. Uh, let's see if that actually comes to fruition. I hope it does. Um, Let's uh, stay with us. We're going to come back to you very shortly. And keep watching Sports Kita for more World Cup dish out. I'm your host, Neil Shah. Always with me, our expert presenter, RK.